there. It's Rich with Rich Bound Photography on Election Day 2016. Let's talk politics. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, no, let's talk uh, Photoshop. Yeah, let's talk aspiring to shoot better and make more money and shoot better things. Anyway, we did a little poll on uh, <clears throat> real estate photography and I'm doing the second most popular thing because I'm, I'm not doing a live tutorial today. I'm doing a screencast of a past shoot. So the second thing that came up were the subjects let's do a sky replacement let's do a fire replacement let's do a tv replacement and uh, let's do a window replacement for a window pull over here put that into there okay so anyway let's get started right away what we're going to do here is do two things we're going to put in a fire and we're going to put in a television screen now you can do whatever you want uh but i want to just show you here so we're going to start by going Command E for edit in Photoshop. Now I want to give a little warning here to newbies and people that aren't familiar with when you're in a house and there is a fireplace, you have many options. You can make a fire, you can put a piece of newspaper in there and burn that. You can uh, usually, uh, many houses have a little electric switch which will just immediately do a, a gas fire. But when you see a house like this and it's got a thing down here like this, if you're not familiar with it, right there, that's where you put the key in to turn on the gas. Don't do it. Let the agent do it. Let the owner do it, but never turn on the fireplace yourself because it could be not working. It could cause damage, and you don't want to be reliable. Liable for, um, you want to be reliable, but you don't want to be liable for any damage. So let's get right into this. I want to put a fire in here. And I could insert a photo of a fire, which is a whole nother tutorial. But this one, I'm just going to do the flame generator in Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is to select a path where I put my flame. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to hold down Shift, Command, N. And I'm going to call it Fire. OK. And I'm going to go OK. So here now I want to go into, I want to make a path, go into my pen tool over here and I'm just going to select the standard pen tool and you want to make sure up here you've got path selected in Photoshop, okay? So all I want to do is I'm going to make this a little larger so I can really see what I'm doing, okay? And I'm going to put a path from here to here. I'm going to make it very simple. Okay, and then I'm going to go up here into Filter, click Filter, Render, whoops, Render Flame. Okay, and while it's doing its thing, I will give my props to Daniel Blake. I think he's from Switzerland. I don't know where that came up from, but he's got a like an Aussie or a South African accent, but I am taking his tutorial and using it as my own, but I always give him props. So now you have the flame control coming up. So what you want to do is play with this on your own time. I don't really want to get into it, but I will show you I use random length and I want to put in, I don't want it to be this big. If I increase the length, which is up and down, I don't want it to be that big and I don't want it to be this small which is going to show you up and down the length. I just want it to be about that big. Okay? Anyway, maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, and I like it. And again, I urge you to play with it on your own time. So give it a second. The wheel goes round and then spits out a beautiful fire. Okay. Well, I like it, but I don't like exactly where it is. And I can't really see the flames behind it. So I'm going to take down the opacity to about 50%. And I want to move it. So the way to move it is I got to get rid of the path first. So I'm going to go click return. Okay. Return. The path is gone. Now all I have to do is command T to transform. And I can move it around where I want it. So one thing I'm going to do is make it a little smaller. So I'm going to go hold down the shift key when I have trans, um, I have a free transform. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And I'm holding down the shift key so it will stay at the same aspect ratio. Okay, so I put it right about there. I'm actually going to tilt it a little bit up that way. And I like it. I like it. I might make it a little taller. 
There we go. Now I'm going to click OK, which is the check, or I could have done return. And I'm going to go into here. Uh, sorry, not there. I'm going to go in instead of normal. I'm going to do screen mode, which it makes it a little more transparent. You really can't see it here. But if there was a screen in front of the um, fireplace, you would, you would really see the results of that. So I like that. I'm going to go out a little bit. And what did that take? About two minutes. Okay, here's the size of the picture. I think I'm going to make it a little more opacity, just about 65%. There we go. I like it. Okay, now let's get into the television screen. Okay, so I want to put a picture into my television screen. And what I want to do first is to, I want to go up to, to the polygonal tool. That's the tool I'm going to choose to select where the screen is on this TV. Now, you know, this TV has a little bit of a frame. Uh, it's very difficult to see here. You can kind of see it in here. OK, so what I want to do is pick out. I think the frame looks like it goes right here. Sometimes it's really easy to do. And I'm going right here. Right here. And then right here. And then right here, back down to here. OK, so I've selected that. That's where my TV screen is going to go into. I don't want it to go overall, and I want it to fit in there. One thing I want to do, just a little added thing, I want to go into Select. I want to go into Modify and Feather. And I want to feather this selection about two pixels. OK, so I'm going to feather that. It'll just come in a little smoother. Little, it won't be such a, a jagged transition. OK, now what I want to do is I want to save. This is called a selection. I want to save my selection into here. Save selection. I'm going to name it TV Picture. OK, so I'm going to go OK. Good, and I've loaded it. So now I can deselect that. Now what I want to do is go into Lightroom, and I've picked out a picture. Now you can take a picture off the internet, and you can steal it, uh, do whatever picture you want, but I'm just going to use a picture of my son's crewing event this past weekend. We live a mile from the best crewing spot in the West Coast, so it's quite popular where I am. Anyway, I'm going to now select. I want to take this picture, but I want to bring it into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is hold down Command E in Lightroom. Command E. There we go. And it's going to send um, this photo to. And I'm using it just as an example. You could use a picture of the house. You could use it in any picture you want. So people do different things. So right now I want to copy the part I want, and I'm just going to go into the um, rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to select the picture. There we go. There, it's selected. Now I want to do Command C for copy. Or you could go up into Edit, go into Copy. Okay, I have copied this. Now the next thing I want to do is I don't need this photo anymore, so I'm going to just get rid of it. Okay, so now what I want to do is to, I want to make my photo a little smaller right there, and I want to paste Command V paste that image here. Okay, so now I want to be able to see it because I can't tell. Oops, never mind that. Oops, don't do not do that. Um, I want to bring down the opacity about 50% so I can see. And now I'm going to hold down Command T for transform and I want to make it over the TV. But it's going to need to be smaller. So right now I'm going to hold down the shift key so I can keep it in the same aspect. I'm going to bring it smaller for the TV. I'm going to move it here. And I'm going to make it even a little smaller. But I want to make it bigger than the TV. Okay. So there we go. Good. Okay. So now what I want to do is click OK. It's moved there. Great. Now what I want to do is to do a um, go into Edit, Transform, and distort. Okay? And why I'm doing that, and then we, have, we always like to enlarge so we can see what we're doing. And remember, I turned down the opacity so I can see what I'm doing here. 
what I just basically want to do is to click all four sides of this and go just slightly bigger than the frame of the TV. It only has to be slightly bigger than the selection we made, but we've got that here. We got this here. Okay. Now we go click OK or return or enter. I'm doing the little click here. Now we're going to now select, load the selection we made. Remember the selection is the inside part. So we're going to load the selection and I'm going to go right down here and look up TV picture. So you go into your channel right here and you look for the, the selection you did. Put up TV channel and go OK. Now you can see there's my selection, but I still have the TV hanging out outside of it. So I just go down into here and I just want to, I'm not holding down command or anything. I just want to add a layer mask and watch what happens. So cool. So cool. Now I bring up my opacity to 100% just to see what it looks like. And the other thing I'm going to do is the same thing as I did on the fire. I'm going to go to normal and I'm going to bring this down to screen mode. And you can see if this if there was a big reflection on the screen, it would make a big difference. It didn't really do much for this. So let's, uh, but I still like to do it. Let's bring this out here. Let me just bring it a little larger. Okay. Now I think this is a little too in my face. So I want to bring it down about 71%. There we go. And if I wanted to change, I could change the fire opacity by going over, click on the fire layer. And I'm going to bring this right about there. Okay. Anyway, I like it. I like it. So there is my um, picture and my final here. I'm going to bring this back with command S W and I'm going to bring it back into, you can see it's saving in the Lightroom and uh, it's telling you how big it is. My files are pretty big, 100, 200 megabytes. So anyway, I now am going to go here and I'm going to go into the uh, sky replacement. So this is the picture I want to use for sky replacement. You know what? I'm going to go here. And I'm going to do it from the beginning from Lightroom. So I picked the picture. I want to do the sky replacement. And here's a shot any of us could have every day um, this time of year. Uh, some people more than others. I'm in California, so I only have a few days um, like this. But this could be a great day in Seattle. So we want to change this. So the only thing I'm going to do here is to just take the blue and lighten up the make sure that I blow out the sky. So you can usually pick blue and luminance and raise it up. So I'm just going to bring this into Photoshop. Okay. So I'm going to do Command E. One thing I want to say, I'm using PPA Sky Swap. You've heard about it. I think I paid $35. It comes with the actions, which I'll show you how to do an action. And it also comes with um, various skies. But I don't really like any of their skies, so I use my own. But right now, I'm just going to put in a nice puffy blue sky in here. So basically what I want to do is I want to go up in here into Windows, go in to see my actions, and I have PPA Sky Swap loaded here. You can see it right here. It's called uh, PPA Sky Swap. And under there, I have Sky Extraction. So I'm just going to go... I'm not even going to use sky extraction for overcast skies because I never really noticed a difference. So I'm going to hold down. I click the sky extraction. I'm going to run the action. So to run an action, you have to click the play button. So it's playing it and you can see it up here in the layers palette. It is extracting the sky and it's doing its thing. Okay, that is done. Now I want to do apply overlay with options and I'm going to run the sky extraction. The, uh, I'm sorry, the option the action. Now, what I want to do is it's going to bring up a dialog box. You've got to show it. You've got to find your skies where they live. And I'm just going to go under sky replacement. I know that's where I keep my skies. So I'm just going to use, uh, let's see here. I'm not going to get too crazy. I'm just going to use this one. I like it. Okay, just a puffy blue sky. 
So you just got to tell the tell it where to live, the actions where to live, the um, the sky replacements where to live. So now I'm going to hold down my shift key because I want it to stay in the same aspect ratio, and I'm going to oh boy that looks kind of nice right there, huh? Okay. So I'm going to now click OK. You could have moved it down here, though, if you like this better. Whatever you like, whatever fits better. But you got to cover up where you need to put it in. So I have to bring it below this fence right here. OK? So I click OK. And it's running its thing. Now, this Actions uh, program is not that great, to be honest with you. I do have problems with it. But this one worked pretty well. But if you go in close, you can see a few things. That this is not great looking, you can see. So what we have to do is we have to go a little bit further. And I'm going to show you how to do it. This is kind of the workaround I tell people about. Um, it's really easy when you get used to it, but it really looks kind of cockamamie, which is uh, Yiddish for really screwed up. So <laughs> anyway, so right now I want to go up into my extract mask up here in the layers palette. Click that, and I want to make sure it's black here. And I want to click my paintbrush, and I want to go into 100%. Okay? Now I'm going to get my paintbrush big here, and I'm just going to paint it in here. Okay? But you can see it goes over the tree, which has always been a bit of a pain in the rear. But I can fix it. Hold on a second. Sorry. Move that. I'm going to move this down here so you can see what it did. So let's go there. Okay, so what we can do is we could just do little sections of this, like here, and paint it in. But what I find it to do easier is to just make a big paintbrush and paint in the whole tree. And I'm going to show you later what to do. Let's go here. Okay, that's good. Hold on. I just got to make sure I can see this whole picture. Okay, so I'm going down in here. And what I'm doing is also going to make sure that I have everything painted in here, over here, over here. Now, what I want to make sure is, depending on your roof, your colors, this actually came in really, really nicely. But uh, just as nicely, it could have been really bad. So what I want to do is just paint it in, make sure it comes in here. And another one could have definitely um, caused me to have a lot of issues on this roof. But this one looks really nice. Okay. And before I leave this, I'm actually going to paint it in down here so it kind of flows okay now what I want to do is to make up for this up in here actually let me go just a little larger is I want to go down to the sky layer click that and keep it on black but I want to take this now and bring it down to six or seven or eight percent flow so I'm just going to erase it here and you can see I'm erasing the sky itself, but that's okay because it looks pretty natural. And I may want to just do a little more because I just don't need a super sky. Just make a little... Actually, I can go down to about 4% here. So it's nice. And I have a nice big brush too. So it looks pretty natural. And there we go. Now... That looks pretty good. So I'm going to bring it back, Command, S, then W, and I'm going to bring it back into Lightroom, and I'm going to, um, you could you could buy that sky. It's, it's not quite a beautiful blue sky, but I don't believe you need to do a beautiful blue sky all the time. I think that a sky like this looks pretty natural. Okay, so what I want to do, though, is I want to take it into saturation and just take my blue, make it a little bit more blue in here. And I'm going to bring in the luminance, take it down just a little bit. There we go. I think that looks really nice. I could actually do a few different changes to the whole picture. I can add my, uh, my 
full bump, adding a little bit of clarity and a little bit of contrast. Give it a little bit here. I can um, make it a little smaller because I don't want to see that house over there. I don't need to see so much tree. I can bring it up here. There we go. And there you go. So I think we've done a great job here. I can also do a radius, a uh, little darker exposure for the street right here. All the whole part down there, we can make it even darker. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so from here to here, I think it would be totally acceptable, this sky. And I don't think we need to do a really, really intense sky. I just think something like this would really be great. And don't worry, I'm not wetting down the... Uh, the lawn right here. It was a rainy day. That's why I did this. That's why I picked this picture. Okay, so last but not least, let's do a sky, uh, window replacement. Okay, so I've got this all ambient shot, and I didn't use this, but it's going to be a good explanation of how we want to re we want to get a good window in here. So what I did here is do my window pole shot. So I exposed for the window. This was probably. Uh, 125th of a second yeah you know what it could have been 125th of a second but uh, I would say that sometimes to get a nice view you're gonna have to do a hundredth two hundredth of a second but the main thing is you want to do the you expose for the view what you want to do is point your flash at the whole window frame you are seeing I'm lighting up here so if you compare the two this is darker everything except the view is darker in this shot so nothing's gonna mask in except right here I'm gonna have problems because that is the shadow from this window sh from this uh, lampshade so I'm gonna have a little problem there but I'll show you how to deal with it so what I'm gonna do is this is gonna allow me to just mask in these darn window shades window slats I wouldn't have to do that if I try to do it here I'd be there all day and it would look like garbage so anyway so let me go here. I'm going to select this image and this image. Oops, bring it down here and edit in as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so the important thing is to remember I've got probably a speed light, just a speed light at camera pointed directly at the window at half power. Uh, you have to play around with the power. So you're going to maybe have to play around with the angle too because if you're right on to the window, you're going to see your flash reflection in the window, which I actually think we see a little bit in here, right here, but that's okay. It's no big deal. For our purposes right now, it's going to work great. So we want to mask it into here. So we're going to bring in our masking layer up here. The window layer is up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and as we're going to do is we always do a mask add a layer mask I'm going to hold down my option on a Mac alt on a keyboard click that and I'm just going to mask it in here now I'm going to show you an example of if I was to mask in in normal mode watch what happens I'm going to have to if I I would have to select each part I'm sorry we're on black here I have to make sure it's on white we're on black from before and I also want to move this up to 100% flow, which I like for window masking like this, so it's fast. If I made the window in here, you can see that it's the slats are looking dark, and I'm, I'm getting overflow here. So, and I'm getting every, it looks terrible. So let's go back. I could do my polygonal tool and just do this uh, right here which is the way people normally did it before they discovered darken mode. And then I'm going to paint this in and just go, you know, here. But that's great there, but and, and it's not really great. It's not great at all. You can see it, it. the slats are dark and it's just not good. But right here, you'd have to, you'd have to select inside this couch and also in this plant right here. So we're going to really make this a lot easier by the darken mode, which is I learned from Wayne Capelli, and uh, I don't know who invented it, but uh, somebody did. 
let's go back to where we were. All we're going to do is do it in darken mode. And remember, up here, darken mode. Remember, the key is everything in the mask is overexposed that I don't want to have to mask in. This couch, everything. And look how easy it is. I can paint right over the frame. Okay, and there you see that problem I told you about the uh, the um, lampshade, but don't worry about it. So let's just go down here. Let's go into here, into here. How easy is that, huh? I'll tell you, it's a lifesaver. You just got to make sure whatever you're masking in the frame, you don't want to see has to be brighter. So the couch had to be brighter. This plant had to be brighter. Everything has to be brighter. But right here, all I have to do is click X. Watch, it's going from white to black. And I'm going to zoom in so I can really see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to... There we go. Okay. And I'm going back into paint. And I'm just going to paint this. Actually, I could use a harder brush. So let's go into here. Okay. So I'm going to go back in and paint out this little lampshade here. There we go. And I'm going to go white and paint this in. Okay. So we're good to go there. A hard brush works a little better. Now, I think this is from the... Uh, you know, this might be a just natural. No, it might be a reflection from the lamp. But what I can do is just go into X, go here, and then go X. Wait, sorry, get out of there. Okay, uh, cancel. Um, I want to go, I'm white here, so it's going to paint it in. I want to go into black, and I want to bring this down into 6% flow. And I'm just going to go erase this a little bit. Okay, so it... It's kind of blended in. But you know what? I don't think that looks good. And I don't think this is a problem. But if this was a flash reflection, uh, it may mask and it may not. You can change it by just masking out or feathering out. Okay? And we have one more thing to do up here. And what I'm going to do here is go back into painting. So I'm white. And I'm in darken mode. And again, I'm just going to go here. Oh, wait, I have to go now into a softer brush. Okay. Oh, you know what I need to do? I'm, I apologize. I have to do 100% flow. Okay, so let's just go right into here. Paint that. Beautiful. A little dark. I could have actually done two exposures for this window. There we go. And he, oh, see, we've got a little bit of shade. There, we've got problems there. So, I will show you. Because it didn't, it wasn't dark, it wasn't bright enough. So, I'm just going to go into X and go and clean that up right there. And I'm going to go back in here and paint this back in here. Well, you know what you can do? Let's do this. I'm just going to go get my polygonal tool because it's not perfect. Go in here. In here, in here. That's easy enough. Okay, and then go back in the paintbrush and just, oops, paintbrush. Here we go, paintbrush, and just paint this back in. Okay, there we go. And uh, I guess if I was to go here, I can. Nope, that's not it. Never mind. Um, so we got it good enough there. Okay, there we go. So that's pretty nice and fast. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a pleasure for me to be able to show you. So uh, let's just do a really quick recap. And uh, as mentioned, I'm going to do a few more tutorials this next week or so. And uh, we have this one. We did the window in here. We have um, this one. We did the, uh, the TV replacement and fire replacement and then we have this one down here and uh, go through my old oh where am I where am I where am I I don't even know where I am hold on a second sorry I am so sorry anyway Galapagos nice huh look at that Galapagos cool anyway um, so we have the sky replacement so we went from here to here Okay, 
there you go. Well, you guys have a great day. It's Rich Baum with Rich Baum Photography saying, see you later. I'm over and out.